Hi, this is Jeff Holsinger with Team Horizon. This is part two of the video that I was talking about the new Synapse gyro system just recently released from Horizon Hobby. Part two is going to talk about the heart and soul of gyro stabilization in our model airplanes and how it's done. And I'm going to do this in a non-electrical engineering terminology so that everybody is going to have the opportunity to understand some of the things that you're hearing people talk about and you may not understand some of the terminology so this is going to be from just generalization of uh, how the sensor actually works and how it relates to our model aircraft okay let's get started so these are examples right here that you see of uh, four gyro stabilized systems that Horizon Hobby has produced and, uh, and is currently producing. So the heart and soul of any gyro stabilized system is the MIMS sensor. So people ask you know, me all the time, what, what is a MIMS sensor? What's it look like and, and what does it mean? Well, it's an acronym and the acronym for the MIMS sensor is Micro Electrical Mechanical Systems, M-E-M-S. And uh, in different parts of the world, they actually don't call them MIMS. So, for example, in Japan, they call them micro machines. So, basically, it's a miniature machine with both electrical and mechanical components. So, let me show you real quick a MIMS sensor and what we're talking about. If you can see my little pointer right here, here's a MIMS sensor on this particular gyro system. And here's a MIMS sensor on this. We're not going to worry about all these other components because that's electrical engineering stuff but guys are asking what's it look like that's what the sensor itself looks like it's both mechanical and electrical in nature they can range from this this size right here from say two to three millimeters all the way down to one micrometer and if it's one micrometer it's one thousandth of a millimeter in size and when they get to be that small they're actually not even visible to the human eye and I'll show you an example here in a few minutes of equipment that uses that small of a MIMS sensor and I bet you've got one in your house somewhere or have been around one and you don't even know it so anyway within that MIMS sensor there's micro sensors in there there's a micro processor the brains of it and there's there can be micro actuators in there and then there's also external components to allow it to interface with the rest of the electrical world which we're not even going to be concerned about that so anyway some people also call MIMS sensors transducers so just to kind of give you a little background on what a MIMS sensor is and what it actually stands for so let's pause the video before we get any deeper into it and I want to show you when we start talking about stabilization on an airplane and you'll hear guys talk about well I've got a three axis gyro and I've got a six axis gyro and a lot of people don't even know what they mean when they say that but you know I'm going to explain what axes mean and how three axes relates to stabilization in our model airplanes and when somebody says hey I've got six axes how can you get six axes and I'll show you an example of more than three axes and we're just going to do it in a very simple format. So I'm going to pause the video and restart it and start to explain some of the terminology. Okay, so when you hear everybody talk about a three-axis gyro in your airplane, what does it actually mean? So let's start out with explaining what they're talking about. And as much as I hate to get it in my own videos, I'm going to have to do this because I'm doing it by myself. So I'm going to show you an example of what they talk about. When they talk about axes, for example, a simple machine tool. This happens to be a mill, and this is capable of doing three axes. Okay, the first axis is this left and right on the table. That's typically called an x-axis. Okay, the next axis is when the table moves in and out this way. That's typically called a y-axis, and then the up and down motion is typically called Z axes. So that's one, two, three axes. That's how we relate to our airplane. Roll, pitch, and yaw. Roll is ailerons, pitch is elevator, yaw is rudder. One, two, three axes. Okay, then you hear the terminology six axis gyros. Well, 
everybody asks, you know, how do you get more than three axes? The, the other axes are rotational axes. So in other words, you got your three base axes here, and then if you turn this table, that's a rotational axis. You take the table and you turn it this way, and then you turn it, that's another rotational. So you get where I'm coming from there, so you can add more than three axes by having rotational axes involved. So that's what the terminology axes stand for. So when you hear a three axis gyro, you know, roll pitch and yaw, uh, left, in and out, up and down, it's all the same thing. When you hear about six axis gyro, that's rotational axes within the base three gyros, or base three axes. And I hope that's not too technical. I'm going to pause the video and then we're going to get back into more about how it works and how it relates to our airplanes. Okay, so now that we understand what a MIM sensor is and what axes stand for and motion, so it's quite simple how it actually works. I mean, it's very complicated, but I'm going to explain it quite simply. It's mechanical movement that's turned into an electrical signal that's processed, that's fed to our servos and our surfaces on our model airplanes. An example of, let's take this receiver itself here. When it goes this way, that's pitch. That's your elevator control. When it goes this way and this way, that's aileron. That's roll control. When it does this and this, that's rudder. That's yaw control. There's your three axes right there. The mechanical movement within the MIMS sensor is converted over to electrical signals that drive our servos and allow our servos to make autonomous corrections without us having to do it on the sticks of our transmitter. So let me pause here and get my thoughts together and then we'll continue. Okay, I'm back. Uh, so let's continue with the uh, explanation of how the gyros work. So if you watch the promotional video, the, there's an engineer, his name's Miguel, and he told uh, everybody about the acoustical noise problem that's inherent with most MIM sensors or most gyro systems. And that's kind of a, a problem that I want to explain. So motion and vibration, we all understand vibration and motion at this point. But did you know that sound is truly vibrations also that you're not able to see and sometimes you're not able to feel? But the MIMS sensor itself can be affected by an acoustical or sound waves which inherently are truly vibrations. So the new AS3X Plus system, the new Synapse system, has a way to help us filter that out in our aircraft because a lot of the turbine airplanes make an acoustical noise based on the, the frame of the airplane based on the turbine. The worst ones are the smaller turbines and the smaller jets typically have more acoustical noise than the big ones. So the best way to, to filter that out is Miguel and the Spectrum team have wrote algorithms and everything to allow that to be filtered out but the other way that they're filtering out the acoustical noise is going to show you inside the new Synapse sensor is very simply what you see there. That's foam. And within that foam, if you pull this up, the sensor would be mounted in the foam. The foam would be put on top of the sensor like so and then enclosed in a CNC aluminum case, now you have essentially prevented any kind of sound or vibration to interfere with the with the uh, MIM sensor itself. So that that's innovative in itself because if you look at our previous gyro systems, they they do not have any kind of sound dampening around the MIM sensor. This new system allows you to dampen out or filter out that acoustic noise that is always present in a typical in a turbine jet 
it uh, shows up mostly, like I said earlier, in the smaller turbine jets. So let me pause here and get some thoughts together and we'll continue on. Okay, so let's continue down this path of understanding how a gyro works. So, as we talked about earlier, gyros or MIM sensors are used in a lot of different things. And I should have probably put this in earlier, but I'm going to bop over here real quick and show you guys. When I talked about MIM sensors being as small as one micrometer, here's an example of six MIM sensors in a print head that are so small that they're not visible to the naked eye. And those MIM sensors are used to control the flow of the ink and the blending of the different colors of ink to allow an inkjet printer to print pictures in really, really high resolution. That's all done through MIMS sensors that are located inside the print head and the MIMS sensors they're using in these print heads are smaller and are unable to be actually seen with the naked eye. So let's wrap this video up. Now that we know what a gyro is, how it works, and some of the terminology, let's uh, relate that to our model airplanes. So obviously, the gyros are mounted into the model airplane itself, and as the model airplane has outside influences, wind and bumps and things like that, the gyro's mechanical movement of the gyro is turned into electrical signals sent down to our servos. Our servos then take that the electrical signal and turn it into a mechanical motion which is hooked up to our ailerons, our elevators. Now the Synapse system is the latest in technology, the microprocessing, the algorithms and or program that the Spectrum team came up with and the new sensors and all that combined together gives you a locked in feeling that you've never probably experienced before. I mean, we've all been flying gyros for a long time, but with the newer system, the Synapse system, the feeling of being locked in and the stabilization of the airplane is so much improved over the previous systems. I just can't wait to watch everybody try this system and start using it in their airplanes. It truly is the next level, the next generation of gyros. And uh, I'm glad to, that it's finally come to, uh, to the market. And I'm sure that this year down to the Joe Nall, there's going to be lots of these systems up and running. And, of course, all the guys are going to be down there. And feel free to ask anybody to help you with the setup. Because the setup with this system is very, very easy. It's all done with forward programming through your transmitter. And most guys, a lot of guys, are very familiar with that. But you can set up a fully stabilized airplane in just a matter of minutes by using the, the first-time setup wizard that comes within the programming of the uh, AS3X Plus Synapse system. So, again, part three is going to be a departure but it's going to continue on how gyros work, but it's going to look at a gyro system from a different view, and I think most people are going to be surprised. But be sure to watch part three. It's going to be a lot shorter than the part one and part two. Thanks for watching.